Hey everyone, so I recently put this article up on australianpropertyupdate.com.au. Now, this is not good news for Australia because you can see here that rents have hit a new record as rental growth re-accelerates. So a lot of people were thinking, hey, the pressure on rents was gonna fall away because we've had so much rental growth in the past three years. But in fact, it's accelerating. It's not plateauing and it's not de-accelerating. So this is not good news for society as a whole. It may benefit some property investors. Other investors may not benefit as much. Some will benefit a lot. However, this is not good for society at large because more of a percentage of our incomes is going towards mortgage repayments and rent and it's putting a lot of strain on a lot of people. But you can see here CoreLogic and they're one of the big groups that do a lot of the, the data for property here in Australia. We use a lot of their data for a lot of the research that we do. CoreLogic says median weekly rents in Australia hit a new record of six $627 per week in April 2024. The data analytics firm says the annual pace of rental growth has also re-accelerated to 8 0.5% as an annualized number, okay? So over the year, they're saying that it looks like rents are gonna grow between eight and 9%, which is a lot because if you're paying $700 per week in rent, well, that means your rent's gonna jump to up to almost $800. So almost another $100 in that example. So you can see here, I've got this chart here on the article and we can see actually what's going on here. So median weekly rents in Sydney, 770 and there's been a 9% growth there. Melbourne, 589, 9.6% growth. Brisbane, 8.5%. Adelaide, 9.1%. Perth is a staggering 13.6% rental growth. All the combined capitals, 9.4%. Combined regionals, 6.4%. You have to remember with the regionals, that includes some areas that aren't really regionals. These are some areas on the outskirts of our capital, such as Geelong and Melbourne, Wollongong and Newcastle and Sydney, Gold Coast in Queensland. So they really become cities in their own right in a lot of ways. But you can see that most of the pressure is on the capital cities because with all of the immigration coming in, students, you can see like with students, uh, permanent residents, a lot of the migrants coming into the country, obviously, predominantly they wanna be in Sydney and Melbourne, a little bit in Perth, a little bit in Brisbane. And a lot of the interstate migration has been people deciding to up and leave Sydney and Melbourne and say, hey, we wanna find somewhere more affordable. We wanna go somewhere where the employment's great. Let's go to Perth, let's go to Brisbane, let's go to Gold Coast, let's move to some of those regional areas as well. And that means that the capital cities has grown at 9.4%, almost 10%. Now this is the number at the higher level at the capital city level, but there are some suburbs that have actually grown 15 and 20%. Part of what we do in terms of looking for a great area to invest is not only look at the capital growth potential, but look at the rental potential. What you have to understand is that when rents are growing this fast, it makes the properties more attractive to investors. Now I wanna show you this chart from the ABS, which where you can see that investor activity is increasing. And one of the main reasons it's increasing is because of how fast rents are increasing. You can see here ABS lending indicators. Now, in this chart here, what you actually see is new loan commitments. This is for the purchase of new property. It does not include refinancing. And if we take out the trend lines, just to make it a bit clearer, you can see here the volume every month of loans being approved for different purposes. So you can see here, these are home loans for investors, people getting a home loan to buy an investment property. Now you can see that it did drop to about 4.6 billion worth of loans being approved per month back in July, 2020. 20, August 2019. And this number has now jumped up to over 10 billion, more than doubled in only four years from that 4 billion to now over 10 billion. So you can see here that the trend line of investors is increasing. And again, going back to my article here, it all comes back to these accelerating rents. You see when the rents are high, even despite interest rates being high, an investor can hold an investment property for $50 a week, $100 a week, they can hold it, and they don't mind paying that holding cost because of the capital growth that's going to be on the property. For more videos like this, please click like and subscribe for more information around the property market. Thank you.